Good morning. This is Avram Shira for Nar Shalom and the Chabura. This morning we're going to speak about Sfira to Omer from a way that is probably new to some of us, which is, of course, Rabbi Nachman's way. He's he's always new in some way and gets us to look at things in ways we not are not usually considering. Uh, today is this 22nd day of the Omer, Chesed Shaber Netzach, and some commentators will reverse that to say it is also the Netzach Shaber Chesed, depending on how you count and which shita you count by, but the basic Peshat, simple version of today's Sfira is the Chesed, the kindness of eternity. Netzach is translated as eternity, Netzach Israel, Lo Shaker, that the eternal of Israel will not lie. God is continuously always true and truthful, and God cannot lie. And hopefully we can aspire towards that quality as well. Some people translate Netzach also as victory. And there is this integral relationship between eternity and victory. That something that lasts forever is ultimately victorious. So Hashem is ultimately victorious, both in the universe and in the human realm. He is the the eternal. There are aspects of us that are also eternal. But essentially, we approach this sphere of Netzach as the eternal one, who is also victorious. Of course, this sphira deals with the right thigh on the tree of life, the human body being the map of the tree of life, and the right thigh being the quality of netzach, or eternal victory. And that is ascribed to us by the Baal Shem Tov as the sphira of Moshe Rabbeinu. These next seven days all correspond to the power of Moshe Rabbeinu, the right thigh, and it's an interesting quality about this part of the tree of life. It is that ability to push forward into challenge. That when people walk, they usually, being that most human beings are right-handed, they push with their right foot when they walk, that that is the quality of going into a challenge. And certainly to have a victory, one must face challenge. Now, the left thigh, which is Aaron or Cohen, which we'll be beginning next week, of course, is the power of Hod, splendor, which is the ability to stand strong and resist challenge. So there's two aspects of dealing with challenges in life. There's going into the challenge, and then there's standing strong and resisting outside forces and challenges. Okay, with that little bit said about the Sfirot, let's see what Rabbi Nachman tells us, and then we'll do a little bit of what I like to call linguistic surgery and take apart some of the ideas because you're going to see that it's uh, it's a bit cryptic and we're not going to get all the answers we need just from the text. And this is Torah 182 in the first section of Lukuti Moran. Da shekol ma sha'olam medabrim besfirat bekol yom yemei ha we should know that all the speeches that people have during the days of the Sfirah to Omer, the 49 days of counting before the receiving of Torah, that people's speech is flowing out of the sphera of that day. That's interesting. In other words, whether you're at the grocery store or at work or driving in traffic and listening to the radio or just getting up and making a cup of coffee, whatever you're doing, when you hear other people talking, their speech is somehow emanating from the sphera of that day. So, of course, our mind immediately jumps to the equation. Well, in that case... Whatever I hear today should be from the sphere of Chesed Shebenetzach, 
of the kindness in victory. And we must, the Rebbe tells us what to do a little bit. And somebody who understands can hear and know this. It's not just called. So he tells us that you can hear and understand and know that people's speech is coming from that sphere of. If he leans his ear, you know, no, he leans his ear into the the hearing, the real listening. So that introduces a lot of ideas. To the words and what they're saying, the stories they're telling, that you're hearing wherever you are, they're coming from that sphere, and you can hear it if you listen well. So, of course, this depends on a quality, a power of listening that all of us might not have or do not know we have. Now, certainly, it's going to help you if you have learned a lot of Torah and Kabbalah and purified yourself and you only hear good things and all the different thing practices that we do have in order to purify our perception of reality. <clears throat> we're going to hear it easier. But I want to emphasize that that capacity is in us if we believe it and if we work it and if we listen to the tzaddik, in this case Rabbi Nachman, and believe in his words, then we have something to go on. So what do we do? Well, we're going to talk about what we do to gain some of that intent listening, that filtering of the stories and the words that we hear. We're going to talk about that for a minute. But first, we need to understand we need to understand that Our listening, our general listening to each other and to the world is at a very superficial level. Now, some people won't like that. They won't like to hear that. Who are you, Avraham, to tell me that, that I listen superficially? Well, I said most people, so maybe you're not most people. But my experience of myself included is that I have to do what the Rebbe says, yate oz no. I first have to teach and remind myself to really listen. Now, right now, I'm doing the talking, so I'm not listening to anyone else. Now, ultimately, there is a part of my brain that is listening to what I'm saying. But only when I understand that my superficial listening is, is the function of consciousness. And that as I practice the art of listening, I will become more attentive to others and what they're saying. And I will be able to turn off my own voice, my own inner voice, to really listen to other people. And this is a practice that we need to be good parents and good teachers and good therapists and good managers whatever job capacity we have, even if you're just a simple employee in a huge corporation, it's going to help to learn how to listen to my boss intently to receive what he's saying. Certainly in relationships like being married or with children, we need to learn to listen on a deeper level. So the first thing to know is that I'm not really listening a lot of times. And you catch yourself, how do you catch yourself doing that is by noticing that my mind is wandering, that my eyes wander, that my thoughts wander. That means I'm not really listening. But when you're really focused on somebody, or a group of people for that matter, 
then you'll notice that the listening changes. You ever watch people at a, at a musical concert? Their listening changes when the music starts. They want to hear the music. They want to hear the words of the song, if there are words. Or they want to hear the subtleties of a symphony. They want to hear the difference between the French horns and the clarinets, etc. So when the music starts, we start to listen. But when we hear people in general, <laughs> well, it's not quite always a symphony. And especially with the noise that takes up a lot of human activity and speech. Okay. So first we have to learn what it means, yate ozno, to turn our ear, to really listen. And I've noticed, uh, I do, do it myself and other people as well, that you know our, both our ears don't work at the same level. Generally, someone has a good ear and a less re receptive or less effective ear. And oftentimes when people talk, you'll, you'll kind of naturally turn your head one side to hear better. Now, maybe this happens as you get older, understandably, but that itself is an activity of trying to hear better. The rabbis teach us not to look at a person when you speak to them. It's famous from the Igera to Ramban, uh, the, Ram, the Ramban's son. And there he tells him, And in this language, he says that we shouldn't look at a person when you're speaking to him. Perky Avot says you shouldn't look at a person when they're angry, because that's even worse, because you're receiving their anger into your soul through the eyes. But even when you're just talking, something happens when I look at somebody that breaks my concentration a little bit, and it affects my listening. What's going on is when I'm not looking at you, I'm actually desensitizing my eyes and hypersensitizing my ears. So it is actually a very useful thing for listening to close one's eyes or to look away while you're listening. And it takes practice, but it works. And it's very helpful. And if I assume that anybody, you know, everybody wants to be better at something. And listening is one of those qualities that we need for our entire lives. And so it's a practice that we can do in all kinds of situations. Okay, now let's turn back to the Rebbe. What he's telling us, he goes on, So if you tilt your ear really well to what people are saying, you will hear that they're speaking from the sphere of this day. Now, before we get into how we can pra practically do that, of course, it's going to help us to understand what these spherot are, or at least something about them, because the spherot of Hashem are God's traits. Just like we have traits that are drawn from Him, He has traits, but the difference is His traits are infinite. He has infinite kindness, infinite might, infinite beauty, infinite victory, eternity, infinite splendor, speech, glory, loyalty, all the qualities of the tree of life, infinite wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We ascribe all of them to him. So when we talk about a sphere, we're talking about a power. But when we're talking about it in the context of God's traits, we're talking about an infinite thing. So God is really the infinite personality. And we are little extractions of that infinite personality. He has all the traits infinitely, which means without end. Which that means that if I think God is kind, I should know he's kinder than I think he is. And if I think God is powerful, I should know that he's really more powerful than I think he is. Because the infinity implies that the human mind cannot grasp it. And that's part of of our acceptance of a relationship with it, with this eternal being is that I cannot grasp him. He can grasp me. But I can grasp pieces. I can grasp little moments and little concepts that help me have this relationship. 
but I shouldn't make that fatal, and I mean fatal error, thinking I know God. Because the minute you say that, you don't know him. And why is it fatal? It's spiritually fatal because it is the beginning of real arrogance. Human arrogance wants to put, we want to put ourselves right in God's throne. I can be king. That's what Elisha ben Abuya Acher did, the sage who went against Rabbi Akiva's advice when he went into the Pardis, into heaven. He thought that there's God and there's an angel and there's me. So I can be an independent reality. And we're, we can't be independent realities because my whole personality is drawn from him. And every human being, no matter what level he's at, is drawing his traits, his qualities from that infinite personality. Okay. So when we have that concept in place, then we can start to understand when we say we're talking today about the kindness in victory, the kindness in eternal victory of God. Where do I hear that? How do I hear that? Well, right now, this morning, uh, I didn't go out into the world. I didn't turn on the news. I've sat here in my room and prayed and learned, prepared for the sheer. I haven't really heard the world, the world talking, which is kind of a, <laughs> a vacation, if you will, sometimes. And I can't tell you I've heard anybody saying anything that's really coming from Sphera. But now that, even as I'm saying this, I remember that I had a phone call early this morning that I had to take. And now I can hear, now as we're talking, I can tell you that it was from this eternal kindness or the eternality of kindness, this sphere of chesed, netzach, chesed shiva netzach. Because I was being asked to show a kindness that I did not want to show. I was being asked to access eternal kindness from somebody else on the phone. Now, that's interesting. I have to correct myself right here with you all because I actually did hear the Sphera. Now that I look at it and put it through the filter. See, that's the idea here is that the, the Sphera are filters through which we can glean the kernels of, exper of true experience that this phone call was asking me to do something that I didn't want to do because it's part of an eternal mitzvah that I'm being asked to do. And this mitzvah involves a great amount of kindness. And, well, I haven't completed the mitzvah yet, but uh, perhaps later in the day I will. But there we have it, that the Rebbe's words always stand true. I have never seen anything that Rabbi Nachman said that did not come true. That's just been my experience over the last almost 30 years. So I bless all of you with that experience of the Rebbe's words. And this is a Torah what four lines. But it's giving us a beautiful secret. A beautiful secret of listening to speech and understanding it's coming through the filters of the Sfirot. So one of the questions I had about this was, what about when it's not Sefirah to Omer, after Shavuot, after the receiving of the Torah? What changes? Do not people's speeches also come to us filtered through these divine qualities? Well, my first impulse is that, yes, they have to. Because speech itself is a gift from Hashem. And we are utilizing his traits to enunciate and to express and to speak as they flow through us. So after Shavuot, maybe I'll remember or I'll be reminded that we could think about this again because we know that the seven days of the week correspond to the seven traits of the middle of the tree of life. These seven traits, these qualities of, of, of character, of personality, are happening every week. The difference during Sefirah to Omer is that there's a shiluv, there's a, a union and combination of two Sefirot for each day. 
Now, in the Kabbalah of the Arizal and the Rashash, they take it to a much more refined and higher level that we're not going to go to today concerning not only the, the two spherot of each day, but also the aspects, larger makifim or transcendent aspects of God's personality that we relate to as the partsufim and the tzlamim and other various maps of the spiritual realm. We can think of the spiritual realm, it's helpful to think of that as like map upon map upon map upon map, and each one is giving us a paradigm of perception. And the more we learn, the more we see, of course, what we don't know, <laughs> but also the more we learn about how perfectly integrated the spiritual is with the physical world. And so hopefully we can bring this teaching down to something useful to us, because even if I can tell you I did have an experience of hearing the chesed shebenetzach of today's sphera in this conversation I had on the phone, how does that help me? <clears throat> well, hopefully it's going to help me act properly. It's going to help me access that power of infinite kindness and the victory of the infinite kindness. That when your person really accesses that eternal kindness, there's going to be a victory woven into it. And so... These teachings need time. We need to go through them. The more Hebrew we learn, they're going to help us. The, <clears throat> the more we repeat them, it helps us. And thank God, you know, Sfirat Omer keeps coming back every year. So we have a chance to learn it and relearn it. And every time it's new. And this, of course, is part of the eternity of the Torah, that it is not a flat, linear document but a living document that is emanating the power of God into vessels that we can receive. Because imagine that you're an infinite God and you want to communicate to your people, to the people you love, but you know that they can't hear you unless you constrict yourself into communication that they can hear. Infinite communication is very hard to receive. <laughs> you know, it tends to <laughs> blow one's fuses. But when God constricts himself into the Torah, we can hear. And that's part of the job of learning and listening. Listening to the Torah, listening to our true selves, listening to our rabbis, listening to our spouses and children, listening to the entire creation. Because remember, as the Midrash says, when the wind blows, the wind blows in Hebrew. So if you catch yourself listening to the wind, you know, Pay attention, you might hear something very special. And so too, you'll hear something special in your life from each day Sphira. Here we're at the 22nd day, and we're going to count up to 49, so we have a few weeks to practice. So God bless all of you with that deep listening to turn your ear, to really focus your hearing in a way that helps you become and access that power that is already hidden inside you. Have a great day. All the best. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.